When you want to return a single value from a function, you write an arrow and a data type before the opening brace. For example, we could write this. Func is uppercase, string, string, returns bool. And inside there, string is equal to string uppercase. So we're comparing the uppercase version of a string against a version of the string that was passed in. If it was already fully uppercased, they'll be the same, identical, it return true, otherwise it'll be different and it'll return false. Now if you want to return two or more values from a function, you could use an array. For example, uh, we could write a function like this one. Func get user returns array of string. Inside there, we'll return Taylor and Swift. And we can then call that by saying get user and print out user zero and user one. This works, but it's problematic because it's hard to remember what zero and one actually meant. And if we ever adjust it somehow, then zero and one could be something else entirely or perhaps not even exist at all. So it's not great. Alternatively, we can have a dictionary. We could say return a, dic a string string dictionary. This time, first name is Taylor, last name is Swift. But this time when we call it, we've got to say user first name and default question mark and user last name default question mark. So we've got meaningful names to the keys inside our dictionary, but it's still messy. In fact, it's even worse in terms of code. It's pretty grim because we can't tell ahead of time if the values are there. Both of these solutions are honestly pretty bad, but Swift has a better solution in the form of tuples or tuples or tuples. Like arrays, dictionaries and sets, tuples let us put multiple values into a single variable or constant. But unlike those other options, tuples have a fixed size and can have a variety of data types really easily. And so we could rewrite get user to use a tuple. We could say get user returns a tuple, first name string, last name string. Then inside the return, first name Taylor, last name Swift. And at the call site, we can now say name user first name and user last name. Let's break it down. Here is our return type. We're returning a tuple. That's the uh, regular parentheses. We've got names first name and last name, and they have two strings. Now, each string inside there has a specific name. It's not in quotes. It's not quote first name and quote last name. They are specific names of things inside our tuple as opposed to the kinds of arbitrary keys we had in dictionaries. Then inside the function, we send back first name Taylor, last name Swift, matching what we promised. There'd be a first name string and last name string. Then when we call get user, we can read the tuple's values by using the key names, first name and last name, hello. Now, I realize they will seem very, very similar to dictionaries, right? But they are different. Come on, you get to read, come on. Oops, sorry, there you go. They are different. And they're different in various ways. You two, come on, push up. Yeah, good dogs. First up, with dictionaries, Swift cannot know ahead of time if a dictionary's key is present. And so, yeah, we can look at it and say, user first name is totally there, it'll be fine, but Swift can't be sure. And that's why we have all those default values coming into play. When you read tuple values in comparison, Swift knows it'll be available because a tuple says it's gonna be available. That's the point of tuples. We then read values using user.firstName, not a string. So there's no chance of typos creeping in, of types first name or first nam by accident. Can't happen, it won't work. These are values, not strings. And also, last one, you two, and also our dictionary might contain hundreds of other values. We don't know. It's completely arbitrary how many values it contains. It could have the, the two we asked for and 500 other values. We just don't know. Don't take sister's treat. That was cheeky. No, cheeky. Come on, sister, go. Quick. Good girl. We could have hundreds of, hundreds of other values. We just don't know. We're lurking around all sorts of other things as opposed to a tuple, which is an exact size. So tuples have 
a really big advantage over dictionaries because we specify exactly which values will exist and what type they have. First name, string, last name, string, age, int, you name it. Whereas dictionaries may or may not contain the values we're asking for. Now there are three other differences and it's important to know, uh, to think about, sorry, when using tuples. And I want to walk you through them in code because it makes much more sense in code, I think. First up, if you are returning a tuple from a function, Swift already knows the names of the values inside the tuple. It's in your return type. So you don't have to repeat them when you call return. And so we have here our tuple version, get user three. We can actually just write Taylor and Swift. Those same tuple names are still being used because they're in our return type, first name and last name. So they can still be read down here. But we haven't got to re-specify them here because Swift knows the name must match the order we provided earlier. If you want to, not required, you just can do it. Second, sometimes you'll find uh, you're given tuples where the elements don't have names. And when this happens, you can actually read them using numerical indices like an array starting from zero. But it's not the same as an array because you know zero will be there and one will be there and da 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 based on your tuple. For example, I could say this will return a simple string string tuple. No names anymore. So we can't use first name down here. We've got to use zero. And down here, we've got to use one. And there's no worries about, oh, was there a value there or not? There must be a value here because we've said it'll have two values, zero and one, these two strings. So they're definitely going to be there. Now these numerical indices, zero and one, they're also available if you use tuples with named values, but I've always found preferring names is just better. Finally, if a function returns a tuple, you can actually pull the tuple out into individual values if you want to. Let's see what I mean. Let's uh, undo this code a little bit, get back to the named version. There we go, boom. That's how it was originally here. We have down here, uh, let user three equals get user three, and then print out first name and last name like this, both reading properties on uh, user three. It's a tuple really. Um, instead of doing that, we can uh, pull it apart into constants individually. We could have said, let first name equals user three dot first name and first name, uh, let last name equals user three dot last name. And now I'll just print out first name and last name. And that is the original sort of name version of our tuple. We can read first name and last name, copy them out from the tuple into individual constants before using them. We're just moving data around really here. That's fine, but as a better version here, rather than assigning these things to user three and then pulling values out one by one, we can skip the first step. We can pull apart the return from user three, sorry, get user three directly into the two constants. We could say this, let parens first name comma last name equals get user three. And that will do exactly the same thing. This is called destructuring. We're pulling the functions returned tuple out into two individual constants. This syntax might hurt your head at first, but really it's just, it's just shorthand for what we had before. Convert the tuple of two elements into two separate constants. In fact, if you don't need one or more of the constants, you can actually go a step further by using underscore. For example, if you want to do just hello first name, we don't need last name anymore, so we can write let first name underscore equals get user three. 